Hello TV family, welcome back to Ted and Vero TV. My name is Veronica and this is my husband. Hi, I'm Ted and here at Ted and Vero TV we're passionate about building stronger marriages, stronger families and of course a stronger you. Thank you guys so much for joining us again on another episode. Before we begin, I just want to remind you guys to like and subscribe to this channel and share the video with your family and friends. Today, there is a topic that we wanted to share with you, and it's on the topic of how to know your love interest is the one. So we have seven ideas here for you on how to know your love interest is the one. If you are in a relationship or you are about to get into a relationship and you are not sure what to look for, we have some ideas on some things that you can, that can help you to identify whether or not they are the one. Number one on our list is, is she a good listener? Is she a good listener? Does this person pay attention to you when you are speaking? Do they have eye contact with you? That is very important. Mm -hmm. Is a person not distracted by their cell phone? You know, there are some people that when you are talking to, then they are on their phone, you know? Are they ignoring you? When a person listens to you, it means that the person will be a good communicator. Mm -hmm. So if you guys get into a relationship and there is something serious that you need to talk about, it will make that easier. So make sure that whoever you are into a relationship with is a good listener. We'll listen to your needs. We'll identify what, you know, is needed in that conversation and we'll try and help you solve problems. Exactly. Some people really enjoy listening to themselves speak. Mm -hmm. And more than anything else, they just want to be heard. Yeah. And so they kind of tune out everybody else around them. But make sure that the person that you're about to get involved in is a good listener and cares about what you have to say as well. Exactly. So, and the second thing that we have written down is, are you both on the same spiritual frequency? Mm -hmm. Obviously, our spiritual beliefs are foundational to who we are. Mm. So if you're getting involved in someone who has a totally different set of beliefs, you're going to find that while maybe initially as you're getting to know each other, that person might be fun and you think that maybe this is going to work out in the long run after the honeymoon phase dies away and the real use set in, you'll find that you'll have trouble connecting with somebody who isn't on the same spiritual wavelength as you. It doesn't mean that they need to be exactly in the same place as far as growth and mm -hmm. things like that, because we're all in a different place mm -hmm. in terms of growth. But for instance, my wife and I are Christian. Yeah. And, you know, if my wife wasn't Christian, that would obviously become a problem in the future. We'd be unequally yoked mm -hmm. because our whole paradigm and our whole world views would be clashing and conflicting. Mm -hmm. And we need to be on the same plane so that we can pull together mm -hmm. along a single course. Yeah. So the third thing that we have here is, do they respect and value your ideas? Okay, this person that you are with is very, very important for them to respect you and to value the ideas that you bring to the table. Yeah. You can't, there are some people that will just brush what you have to say off completely because they feel like, you know, either you are not smart enough or whatever you are saying is not that important, you know? So make sure that whoever you are with will value and respect mm -hmm. you and your ideas because the ideas that you bring to the table is what makes you who you are. And if they, con they are constantly shutting you off or shutting you down, it will be very difficult for you to express and to for you to manifest yourself into you know, who you are and what the future holds for you. And number four is, do they love your family? Mm, that's a good one. I've seen relationships where, let's say the husband doesn't like his fiance's parents or maybe her siblings or something like that. And so he kind of develops this grudge and then maybe moves her away from the family just so that he can kind of have more control and he can avoid whatever it is that he doesn't like about her own family. Mm -hmm. But you really need to get involved with someone who is willing to embrace the other person's family. And really it's just about love for the person that you're getting involved with. Yeah. You know, you don't have to get along with every member of the family necessarily, mm -hmm. yeah. or maybe it's better to, for me to say that you don't have to like every member of <laughs> the family. There's always going to be clashes of personalities. It's Here not even there. necessarily mm -hmm. anyone's fault. But as long as there's an openness for relationship mm -hmm. and for communication and all that stuff within the family and there's this freedom you know there's no controlling one mm -hmm. or the other to try to maybe 
silence the family or to pull you away from the family. Mm -hmm. So and family is where we come from. Yeah, you know, exactly. You can't just shut that down. It's a part of who we are. Yeah, it's very, very important, family. So make sure that unless your family is very poisonous and everything that you do, they shut you down and disrespect you, then I have something to say about it. But yeah. just make sure that when you get into a relationship that you don't completely abandon your family. They are important and at the end of the day, family is all we got. You know, love them as much as you can, support them when you can, and just be with them when you can. You know, pray for them, and, um, you know, in general, just keep loving on them and don't reject your family, don't throw them away because, you know, you found someone that you call your own and now you decided that you are gonna completely move on. And also, you'll be surprised that when you're down and out and you don't have anybody else mm -hmm. to help you, your family will almost always be there, be there for exactly. you. Exactly. So the next topic, I think we are on the fifth one. The fifth one is, are they supportive of your dreams and goals? Ooh, mm. This one goes along with your ideas as well. Yeah. Is this person that you are with or want to be with supportive of your dreams and goals? Mm -hmm. We all have dreams and goals, you know, which is very important. You need to have dreams in your life. If you don't have dreams, then how do you keep living? You know, if you want to go to school to become a doctor, that's something that you've dreamed about for the longest period of time. If you want to open a business, make sure this person is enlightened enough to want to support this. You know, I know that life is difficult. And when two people are coming together, which means he also has dreams, you have dreams, you know what I mean? But find a way to support each other. Let it not be that you throw your dreams away because okay your spouse has a dream that he needs to chase don't throw yours away you can put it on hold he can put his on hold so that one of you can you know do yes and after that then you know you also do yours but don't throw completely your, your don't throw your dreams completely away yeah. and make sure that you are supportive of his dream and make sure that he's also supportive of yours mm -hmm. dreams don't just spring out of nowhere dreams are a very intimate part of who we are you know, for instance, I've always wanted to be a novelist. Mm -hmm. That isn't just some arbitrary thing I picked off of a dream tree and decided mm -hmm. that I would have. It's something that has always been a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. So if your partner isn't interested in supporting that or even worse, discouraging that, it's actually going to be killing a part of you. And dreams are directly attached to hope too. And hope is what keeps us going. Mm -hmm. So, And our number six is, are they open-minded enough to see you as an equal partner? Mm -hmm. Obviously, this one is a little bit controversial because people have really strong feelings about this. Mm -hmm. And from the Christian worldview, it's understood that the man is the head of the household. Mm -hmm. It's first Christ is the headship of the entire marriage. And then it's the man who is the covering of the wife. And there's a beautiful order to that. But at the same time, I think that all too often it's abused mm -hmm. in a way because there are a lot of men out there that have insecurities is yeah. what I believe. And because of those insecurities, they feel like they need to control their wives. Mm -hmm. So they take these verses and they manipulate them into meaning something that the Bible never intended. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's how it starts. And then it goes into talking about the wife's submission and how each is to love one another. Mm -hmm. But it starts out, submit to one another mm -hmm. out of reverence to Christ. Mm -hmm. And the thing about all this is when the man truly loves the wife mm -hmm. in imitation to the way Christ loves the church, mm -hmm. he is going to receive yeah. the submission yeah. from his wife yeah. by loving her that way. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. never going to get out of somebody what you want mm -hmm. through force yeah. and through coercion and through some sort of dominance mm -hmm. or acting like a dictator. Mm -hmm. You're never going to receive genuine love out of that. So love your wife earnestly mm -hmm. and you'll get exactly the reciprocating end from her to submit unto you as her authority. And Genesis talks about how Eve was made out of the man's rib, out of his side. Mm -hmm. You see how we're sitting side by side. Mm -hmm. Out of his rib, Eve mm -hmm. was brought forth. Yeah. So it, it really, we're attached. Yeah. We're attached. I often am picking my wife's brain because mm -hmm. I value her mind and her opinion. And I know that God has given her to me mm -hmm. as my wife. Mm -hmm. And so it isn't about authority yeah. In in that kind of sense at all. When you have you are in partnership with someone, you brainstorm together, 
you know, you come up with um, ideas together, you work together, you build together. And so that is what we have. And when you have an equal partnership with someone, because you are both working towards the same goal, his interest becomes your interest and her interest becomes your interest. Yeah. Because when they fail, you fail. And when you fail, they fail as well. So the two becomes one is the concept of not only um, pushing um, the other person to grow, but also pushing yourself to grow and to be successful. Yeah. And that is why two are better than one because they have a greater return. So the last idea that we have here on how to know your love interest is the one is, do you have shared vision that you are both working towards? Mm -hmm. Do you have a shared vision that you are both working towards? Yeah. I know this goes back to the topic of dream, but when you come into a marriage, it's very important for the both of you to find something that you love and something that you are both working towards. Whether it comes to raising your children and making sure that they are this way, you know, whether it comes to both of you deciding to go back to school, whether it comes to both of you deciding that you want to travel the world together, whether it comes to both of you deciding that you want to establish a, bu a business together, mm -hmm. whether it comes to the two of you deciding that, okay, we want our marriage to be a glorious, a blessed marriage, that is a shared vision. Yeah. So make sure that whoever you are going to a relationship with is in sync with you. That whatever that you 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 both write down that you decide to do, you know, you you get to accomplish them. When Ted and I got together, one thing that we did was to write down our dreams mm -hmm. and what we wanted to do. We yeah were a little bit in debt when we first got married. We wrote that, okay, we want to finish paying our debt by this date. And we were able to accomplish that. We want to be able to pay off our house by this date. And we were able to accomplish that. We want to be able to do this by this date. And we did that. So a shared vision, a shared um, idea, a shared love, a shared um, goal will help make your life only easier. So if you have any ideas that you think should be should be considered when going into a relationship or before considering if this person is right for you please leave them in the comment below for our viewers thank you guys so much god bless you as always don't forget to like and to subscribe to our channel and if you have any advice that we can use for our next video let us know god bless you have a wonderful day everyone see you next time see you next time bye bye bye, -bye.